In electrocardiography, the position of the positive side of the dipole and the positive electrocardiography electrode relative to each other is extremely important because this determines the size and the shapes of the electrocardiography waves. This relationship is not constant, it is changing. You can imagine that there are two types of conditions that change this relationship. One is that the position of the positive electrode can change. Two is that the position of the positive end of the dipole can change. When the action potential that is produced in the sinoatrial node is spreading to the rest of the heart, many dipoles form because it spreads in many directions. In other words, uh, when the action potential is spreading to the rest of the heart, the position of the positive end of the dipole is continuously changing. This change and the effects of it on electrocardiography waves will be e explained in the next video. In the next video, I will have an electrode placed in a constant position and I will try to explain the waves formed by the different dipoles that appear as the uh, electrical activity is spreading in the heart. The second way of changing the relationship that we have been discussing is um, changing the position of the electrodes. So in this video I will take a dipole, I will keep it constant, I will put many positive electrodes around it and try to explain how this dipole reflects the different electrodes. So let me start. Here I have drawn a dipole for you, positive and negative end, ISO potential lines and the electrical field that the dipole uh, creates and this line in between is the zero potential line. In electrocardiography the dipole of the heart is expressed by a vector. A vector is an arrow. Here, I am using red for the arrow that is representing the dipole in the heart. Here is our vector that I'm going to keep constant during this video. The length of the arrow vector tells you about the strength of the dipole, how big it is, and the position of the positive end of the uh, uh, the dipole is pointed out by the tip of this arrow. In the video number three, I have discussed uh, a, a, an important rule of electrocardiography. This rule says that if the positive electrode is on the positive side of the dipole, you are going to record a positive wave in electrocardiography. In the examples there, it was very easy to see that the positive electrode was on the positive side of the dipole. But it is not always like this. So we have to be more detailed about what is or where is the positive side of the dipole. To understand this, we put a perpendicular line, which is the zero potential line in this case, to the dipole. Uh, according to you, to the side, the 180 degrees of areas on the right side of this zero potential line is the positive area of the dipole. Any electrode placed anywhere in this area is going to make a positive recording in electrocardiography. And of course, the second 180 degrees on the left side, according to you, represents the negative side of the dipole. So any electrode in this area is going to record a negative wave in electrocardiography. Um, here I want to use another arrow, a black arrow. This black arrow is going to be the axis of the electrode. So it is going to connect the positive electrode to the negative electrode. Its size is not important, uh, only we need to know that the arrowhead is where we have our 
positive electrode. So using the red arrow, the vector of the heart, and the black arrow, the uh, axis of the electrodes, I shall try to explain how the power of the dipole reflects to electrocardiography waves. Here I have drawn three uh, pictures. Here, uh, in the first two of them, these two arrows are going to be parallel, and in the last one, the third one, they are going to be perpendicular to each other. Here is the dipole that I'm keeping constant in this video, and parallel to it is the electrode axis. In this example, the arrow of the electrode axis is on the left according to you, so the positive side, the positive electrode is going to see the negative side of the dipole and it is going to make a negative recording. So how, I, how do I determine the size of this recording? If you draw perpendicular lines from the tip of the vector arrow that shows the size of the dipole, we obtain two points. The line, the distance between these two points is going to give us the strength of dipole that reflects to the electrocardiography. You can see here that this distance is equal to the strength of the dipole, which means the strength of dipole is maximally reflected to the electrocardiography recording. And here I have drawn a maximal wave. So, the, when two are parallel to each other, and when the positive electrode is on the negative side of the dipole, we have a maximal negative wave. Let's have a look at the second condition about them being parallel. Here, this time they are parallel, but the positive electrode is on the positive side of the dipole. Uh, of course, if you draw perpendicular lines from the dipole to the electrode axis, you are going to see that the dipole will be reflected maximally to the electrocardiography wave. And because positive electrode is on the positive side of, side of the dipole, you are going to record a maximally maximal wave with positive deflection. What about them being perpendicular? Here we have the same dipole and the perpendicular axis can be of two types. Positive electrode can be down there or up here, but this is not going to change anything very much. Uh, so if we draw a perpendicular line from the vector to these electrode axes, what we find is just one point. This means that there is no electrical potential difference here and the electrocardiography is going to draw a, a horizontal line, which we call is an isoelectric line. I want you to go back to the uh, third video and try to remember the last example I gave about depolarization. There, the positive electrode was placed in between here, and what we recorded was a small positive wave followed by a small negative wave. This, either you have an isoelectric line or a, a biphasic wave like this to represent the zero potential. If you can uh, compare the, the position of these axes to the to the figure of dipole that I have drawn, we easily understand that the electrode axis is actually, actually at the zero potential line where there is no electrical potential difference, so electrocardiography cannot record anything in that case. These two drawings represent a zero recording. Um, what about the other conditions? What if it is not parallel? or perpendicular, but in other angles. So, I am going to use the figure on this side to explain. We have expressed that electrocardiography represents, shows us events in two dimensions. So, in two dimensions, we have a plane. In electrocardiography, we are going to have frontal and horizontal planes. Here I have drawn you a frontal plane. And 
I have placed my uh, dipole, which is with the same position in all of this recording, and I have placed positive electrocardiography electrodes in different positions around this dipole. Um, the positions of the electrodes are expressed in degrees in electrocardiography. Here, the rightmost electrode at the horizontal position, this positive electrode, is at zero degrees. As you go downward, you go down to plus 30, plus 60, plus 90, and plus 180 degrees. If you go up from the zero degrees, you reach minus 30, minus 60, minus 90, and minus 180 degrees. You can see that minus 180 is the same with plus 180. If we bring the information from this side to here, here is one electrode axis that is parallel to our dipole, and we know that this is going to produce a maximal recording. And we can see the arrowhead of this axis is on the positive side, uh, which means that the positive electrode is on the positive side of the dipole. So, uh, it is summarized, we are going to have a positive recording with the maximum amplitude. What about the other uh, parallel electrode axis? In the other one, the positive electrode is on the negative side of the dipole. Uh, Therefore, there is going to be a negative recording, but, we, but because uh, they are parallel to each other, we will know that this is going to be of maximal amplitude. Here at plus 90 or minus 90, we have the perpendicular axis, and we have already explained that if the axis of the electrodes is perpendicular to the dipole, you're going to have a zero potential recording. A zero potential recording in electrocardiography can be represented by a straight line or a biphasic wave as we have expressed before. Yeah, what about the degrees in between? How will the dipole reflect? how much of the power of it will be seen by the other electrodes at different angles. How do we understand it or how do we measure this? Here is our positive electrode at plus 30 degrees. From the tip of our dipole, we draw a perpendicular line to the uh, axis, electrode axis at plus 30 degrees. The point that this intersects the, uh, the, the point that this intersects the electrode axis is going to give us the size of the uh, dipole that, the, that is reflected and therefore, and therefore the size of the electrocardiographic wave. You can see that this is smaller than the size in zero degrees. So we have positive electrode is still on the positive side of the dipole. Whole of the area on the right side is the positive side of the dipole. So this is plus 30, but it is going to be a positive uh, recording, but it is going to be smaller than the maximum. Let's have a look at plus 60 degrees. We again draw a perpendicular line from the tip of the dipole and the point that it intersects the uh, electrode axis shows us the size of the dipole that will be reflected onto the electrocardiographic waves. And here we have a positive but smaller wave. We can see that going from 0 to 90 degrees, the amplitude of the um, the amplitude of the electrocardiography wave is going to drop. Going upward, it is the same. Going upward, the, electro, the electrodes of the positions of the electrodes will be changed to minus 30, minus 60, minus 90, and the size of our positive wave is going to decrease, and there will be no amplitude at minus 90. What about the other side of the uh, what about the other side of the vertical plane? On the left half 
on the left 180 degrees area, we know that all our positive electrodes are going to record a negative wave. You see here that they all record a negative wave. But from 100 and minus 180, if we go down to plus 150, plus 120, we can easily say, we can easily see that the amplitude is decreasing. The logic is the same with the first area that I have explained. So in this video, I have tried to explain how a vector can reflect to different electrode axes because this is going to change the size and shape of the electrocardiography waves. In the next video, I'm going to have an electrode placed, positive electrode placed on a fixed position and explain the waves that are formed while action potential is spreading to the heart and forming many different dipoles with positive ends at many different points. Thank you for watching. I hope it has been useful.